Uh, my name is Andrew Dessler. I am a professor of atmospheric sciences at Texas A&M University. Yeah, so I, it's really interesting to look at sort of the evolution of our understanding. I think if you went back 40 years is the first time people started thinking about, well, what's going to happen to atmospheric humidity? And there's a famous paper in the 60s by Weatherald and Manabe, and you know, they said, well, the atmosphere is going to maintain constant relative humidity. But they, it took decades to actually demonstrate that that was the case. And for a long time, uh, skeptics would say, well, do we really know that atmospheric humidity is going to stay constant? Because if that happens, that means you get a lot more absolute water vapor as the climate warms. That's a very positive feedback. Um, and sure enough, in the last 10 or 15 years, I think we've really nailed that problem. And at this point, there's really no credible arguments against a strong positive water vapor uh, feedback, meaning that water vapor amplifies the warming you get from carbon dioxide by itself. Um, and so then clouds is actually a much harder problem. And, and the difficulty with clouds is that clouds do two things. They reflect solar rate sunlight back to space. That tends to cool the climate. But they also trap uh, heat, and they keep it from radiating to space. And that tends to warm the climate. So the net effect of clouds is the net of those two large opposing, uh, opposing factors. And so that makes clouds much harder to, to do than water vapor. And so we haven't, I wouldn't say we've nailed the problem of clouds yet. But we understand it much better now than we did five or 10 years ago. And it's becoming increasingly hard to make the argument that some people make that clouds are going to stabilize the climate against carbon dioxide. There's really no evidence to support that. Um, and there's a sort of slowly accumulating evidence that clouds are going to, like water vapor, amplify the warming from carbon dioxide.